this lesson is going to be on cracking hydrocarbons. So the word cracking we use quite often day to day. Um, hydrocarbons we've looked at previously, so these are molecules made of hydrogen and carbon atoms. So cracking, um, when something cracks, you can think about it breaking. And we can apply this to cracking hydrocarbons. So when we crack hydrocarbons, we are breaking up our hydrocarbons. So we've looked at fractional distillation where we're separating out different length chain hydrocarbons based on their different boiling points. However, cracking allows us to break down our longer chain hydrocarbons into smaller um, hydrocarbons. Now, you might be wondering why we would want to do that. So this graph here should help illustrate this. So what we've got on our x-axis is various lengths of carbon chain. So um, starting with one, which is methane, all the way through to um, hydrocarbons with more than 24 um, carbons in them. Um, four we should be familiar with now as being butane. And then eight is octane, which is commonly found in petrol. Now, for each of these different lengths, we've got two bars going on. So we've got a purple and a pink. The purple is telling us the percentage of that hydrocarbon that is naturally found in crude oil. So what you can see is the, over those different chain lengths, the percentage of it found in crude oil very much varies. However, our demand, this is determined by what we're using these different um, fractions for. So methane and butane we use as fuels. Um, petrol, obviously we use that for our cars. So all of these are very high in demand and actually they're a lot higher in demand than what we are able to get from crude oil. You'll notice the longer hydrocarbon chains, so 16, 20, 24, the amount of that found in crude oil is actually higher than the amount we use it for. So remember things such as bitumen that we use for tar, actually the amount that we use is a lot less than the amount we get in crude oil. So what cracking allows us to do is take those longer, less useful hydrocarbons and break them down into smaller, more useful hydrocarbons which are more in demand so we can help meet that demand. So cracking, this is our definition of cracking, it's the process in which larger, less useful hydrocarbon molecules can be broken down into more useful smaller molecules. This type of reaction is a thermal decomposition reaction. Now, we've looked at thermal decompositions before, looking at the breaking down of calcium carbonate into calcium oxide, which also releases carbon dioxide as a byproduct. And the way we do that is we have some calcium carbonate, which is chalk, in a boiling tube, we heat it with a Bunsen burner, and the carbon dioxide gas comes off, and we're left with the calcium oxide solid. So thermal decomposition, those two words, thermal, we've looked at quite a lot in our previous topic, energy changes, we're thinking about heating, um, then decomposition, you're probably quite familiar to um, looking at things such as compost decomposers, so that compost, it's biological breaking down of those materials, but deco decomposition just means that it's breaking down. So with our cracking, it's thermal decomposition because by heating our hydrocarbons under certain conditions, we are able to break down those molecules. So we heat our crude oil to vaporise the hydrocarbons. We can then either pass it over a hot catalyst of aluminium oxide, or we can mix it with steam and heat it to a high temperature. So there are two different ways in which we can crack hydrocarbons. Um, this is a chemical change because we're breaking bonds. And so things that we can look at in chemical, uh, for chemical reactions 
bubbles of gas, colour change or changes in temperature. This is an example of cracking of decane. So decane, as you can see, is an alkane which has 10 carbons and therefore 22 hydrogens. Now when we break the decane, we could break it any one of those carbon-carbon bonds. In this example, we're breaking it down into octane and ethene. Now ethene looks a lot like ethane in that it has two carbons. However, it doesn't have as many hydrogens as what an alkane would have. And that's because this is an alkene. So notice the ene on the end instead of the ane. That ene is due to there being a double bond between the two carbons. So a double covalent bond, we have four electrons that are being shared between the two atoms instead of two electrons that you would normally find in a single covalent bond. Here we're breaking, we're cracking decane again, but this time we're going into hexane and butene. And here what you should probably notice with butene, again it's a bit like butane because it has four carbons. So that but part, that prefix of the word, is due to the number of carbons in that chain. But again, it's got the ene because it's an alkene because it has a double bond. When we looked at alkanes, we called them saturated as they only had single bonds. Our alkenes, therefore, are described as unsaturated as they contain at least one double bond. And that means that not as many hydrogens have been able to be bonded to the carbons as you would with an alkane. So we get two different types of molecules, alkanes which we've looked at before, which are saturated. Our alkenes, they are unsaturated, and that's due to the double bond, the double covalent bond between the two carbon atoms. Alkenes are more reactive than alkanes, and they are useful in industry in order to make polymers. So polyethene, is lots of ethene molecules that have been added together to make a long chain polymer. Um, in terms of alkene reactivity, we can use this to our advantage in order to test whether something is an alkene or an alkane. As our alkenes are more reactive and therefore we can use something which is going to react with the alkene but not the alkane. So what we use is bromine water so bromine water is orange, and when it reacts with alkenes, it decolorizes, so it turns colorless. Alkenes also do burn in air, um, but they tend to be more smoky compared to alkanes. But our test for alkenes is using this bromine water, um, which goes from orange to colorless, and that will confirm the presence of an alkene. Whereas with alkanes, there's no reaction, so it would remain orange. Um, so I'm going to leave you with these four questions to have a go at. Um, any problems, do send me a message. Thank you.